Hi, my name is Aaron Shaw, and I'm here to discuss API.ai, which is a Google product that takes away a lot of the pain of building virtual assistants. So uh, a virtual assistant is a software agent that can perform tasks or services for an individual. There are two main types of virtual assistants. One, we communicate via voice commands, such as Echo, Google Home, Siri. And the other one that we text, this is sometimes known as a chatbot. Um, and they are pretty much virtually the same thing, just different forms of communication. I can ask Google Home to play a song in my kitchen, or I can type a command, such as asking for images for my trip, in the Google Assistant app and receive a response. Uh, what connects them is that they understand natural language, which is just means that you can um, ask the assistant a query in multiple formats, and you don't have to remember a particular command to get the sort of response that you want. Other than being super duper cool and futuristic to talk to our computers, why would this be important? Uh, well, some pr analysts predict that by 2020, 30% uh, of web browsing sessions will be done without a screen, so i.e. your car, Echo, Siri. 50% uh, of all searches will be voice commands. And 85% of customer interactions will be managed without a human. So clearly, chatbots, virtual assistants, they may be necessary to keep up with rapid changes in expectations for user experience. So before I get started into how API.ai can help you build your own virtual assistant, I'd like to briefly touch on the history of virtual assistants just in general. Uh, but luckily, you don't have to go back that far. <laughs> um, as you may have noticed, this uh, presentation has a theme. And the desire for integrated virtual assistants is actually quite old. Um, it can be found in sci-fi decades before its realistic implementation. Most famously, the 1968 film 2001 A Space Odyssey had HAL 9000. And he was a conversational computer that controlled the majority of operations aboard the Discovery. Uh, and that's the space vessel in the film. And while HAL's capabilities were quite impressive, those who have seen the film know that the total operational integration of HAL was actually kind of a mistake. <laughs> uh, so just two years prior to the release of the movie 2001, MIT released ELIZA. And this is considered really the first chatbot. Uh, and Eliza simulated conversations by using pattern matching and substitution methodology that gave users an illusion of understanding on the part of the program, but there were really no built-in frameworks for contextualizing events. Um, she pretty much just repeated back to you what you said or other sort of general stock phrases. Still, many users were convinced Eliza possessed intelligence and understanding, proving that most people just want someone to listen to them. Uh, <laughs> And there were no real technological leaps until 2000, 2001 with Smarter Child. And some of us older audience members may actually remember chatting with him on AIM. Uh, he was pretty fun. Uh, and Smarter Child was one of the first publicly released chatbots. Uh, and it included a wide range of database applications. For example, instant access to news, weather, stock information, movie times, yellow page listings, and sports data. Uh, but Importantly and interestingly, he was also able to discern some sentiment. Uh, if you spoke foully to him, he'd stop talking to you. <laughs> I don't know if anyone did that, but I mean, all, all teenagers did that. <laughs> um, in 2006, IBM released Watson, uh, and this was a question answering computer system capable of answering questions posed in natural language. The computer system was specifically developed to answer questions on the quiz, so Jeopardy. Uh, but Watson's now being integrated for business purposes. And back in 2013, um, IBM announced that Watson software systems would be having its first commercial application for utilizing management decisions in lung cancer treatment at Memorial Sloan Kettering. So then we get the 2010s. Uh, and the early 2010s is when virtual assistant technology and chatbots expanded in capability and exploded in popularity. Uh, there are, of course, the big three that we probably all know, Google Home, Siri, Echo, but tons more are now integrated in even the smallest of apps. Now, in 2017, um, we have, <laughs> with the help of API.ai, um, my chatbot, HAL 9000. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I just recorded this ahead of time to decrease failure points. Uh <laughs> But he really has two main functions. I built him as a weather forecaster. So if I ask him the weather in a location in a time, he'll give it back to me. And he can do it for multiple locations and different times, as you can see here. So that's great. Um, I also decided to make him a little true to his character as well. So I can have a conversation from the movie with him. <laughs> um, not, in so, not in its totality, but a lot of the really stock phrases that um, make Hal very famous, you might actu actually recognize even if you haven't seen the film. So I'll just let him finish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, that was it. Yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was one more. <laughs> oh, no, you'll never know. <laughs> uh, so what were the mechanics of a conversation with the chatbot? So first, the user needs to invoke the agent with a statement or question like, hello, what's your name? Like I did. Um, then we should have a question in mind. Um, what's the weather like in New York? Our chatbot also needs to know what information is useful for answering the user's request. And these pieces of data are called entities. Uh, in my demo, the two entities, for ex two ex example entities, would be New York and tomorrow. Once it identifies the necessary identities, it can make a request to receive the information it needs in order to answer a question. Then it outputs a response. And while I didn't implement this in my chatbot, um, you can use uh, context to keep these parameter values. Um, from one query to another. So if I ask my chatbot, what's the weather in New York, and then I ask him, what is it in Chicago, our bot will recognize the context from the previous query. Uh, and so this is just a flow chart of what's going on behind the scenes when we use our API.ai agent. Uh, the user makes a request through whatever app or device designated by the developer. And the API.ai platform receives the query and tries to match it to a pre-established intent and parses any necessary entities. Uh, some entities, like the weather conditions, would be uh, needed to be defined by the developer so they can recognize um, that as an important part of our question. And depending on the query set up by the agent, it may need uh, to seek the answer from an external API or from a designated database. And so. API sends this information to your webhook, which is in reality just an HTTP request, and it subsequently fetches the data needed and sends it back to your agent. And after the answer is received, the data is returned and our chatbot outputs its answer. So um, since that was a lot of information, I'd like to briefly reiterate some of the most crucial terms that you would need to know. And so agent, um, agents are in essence our virtual assistant or chatbot. Uh, and in our example, it would have been HAL 9000. And an intent represents a mapping between what a user says and what action should be taken by your software. One intent in our app was weather. Uh, for the agent to understand the question, it needs examples of how the same question can be asked, asked in different ways. And developers should really add as many permutations as they can think of to this. What's the weather? What's the temperature? How cold is it? Et cetera. The more variations added to the intent, the better the agent will comprehend the user. Uh, again, entities are basically important parameters needed to complete a request. Some examples of entities from my demo, again, would be location, New York, date, tomorrow, um, because those are necessary to respond, to respond with the proper information. Uh, and entities are powerful tools uh, used for extracting parameter values from natural language inputs. Um, right, and any important data you want to get from a user's request will need a corresponding entity. Um, fulfillment, um, most of the time this just means setting up a webhook, i.e. your uh, HTTP request to an external API. Uh, mine is connected to a weather API, I can't remember the name, uh, but that's how it was able to respond with the current weather conditions in whatever location I wanted. And uh, context represents the current context of a user's request. And this is helpful for differentiating phrases, which may, may be vague or different meanings, depending on the user's preference, geographic location, current page in an app, or topic of conversation. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, with very little uh, pain points, I was able to make my own chat point with much multiple functions uh, and pretty easily. And that means API.ai is a fantastic resource for developers. Also, uh, it's incredibly popular. It's used by over 150,000 developers. It also supports 14 different human languages. And you are able to build your agent with API.ai and deploy it across numerous platforms and software development kits. And best of all, it's actually free to use. So if you're interested in getting started, I won't go too much into the mechanics of how you do it. They have a really fantastic um, explanatory go through to get you started. You just need to sign up at api.ai and follow the instructions like I did to build your first agent. And then maybe after you've done that, uh, try customizing your own. So maybe deploy it on a different platform, a different medium, or maybe a different language and see how you can possibly integrate chatbots into your next app. Thank you. <laughs>